Grab your drink and a biscuit and let's do this. When you're stuck at home with time to spare, can't go outside, you're not going anywhere. Why don't you pull up a chair or pull up a suit, tune into virtual Sunday school. We have a craft to do and a story or two. Say hello to Nat, she's stuck at home too. Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School? Today we're going to be looking at a famous Bible character. So we're going to look at part of David's story. So we'll have a Bible story, some fun crafts, a prayer time, and then we'll finish with a final thought. We're going to look at the story of when God chose David to be king, which can be found in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verses 1 to 13. To help us tell the story, we're going to use some editing magic and Rob's going to be one or two of the characters for us. Well, all of the characters. One day, God sent Samuel to Bethlehem to a man named Jesse because God had chosen one of Jesse's sons to be the future king. Jesse introduced Samuel to his sons. Firstly, Samuel met Eliab, 
who was very tall. Surely this is who God wants to be king, Samuel thought. But God said, no. Do not consider his appearance or his height. People look on the outside, but God looks at the heart. So Samuel moved on to Jesse's next son, who had a very funky name, Abinadab. He was very strong. But God didn't choose him to be king either. Next, Shammah, who was very handsome, came before Samuel. Perhaps he could be the king. Nope, this still wasn't God's chosen king. Jesse had seven sons come before Samuel. All seven of these brothers could have been king, but it didn't matter if they were strong or tall or handsome or popular or funny or sporty or confident. They were not who God had chosen to be king. Samuel asked, I don't suppose you've got any more sons. Jesse replied, well, there is David, but he's the youngest. He's out in the fields with the sheep. Call him in. We won't sit down until he arrives. So they called David and he came to meet Samuel and the Lord said, this is the one. So Samuel took some oil and anointed David that one day he would be king. You might have heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. And you know, when Samuel met Jesse's first son, he thought surely this is the one God wants to be king. He judged him on what he looked like on the outside. But God said, no, people look on the outside, but God looks at the heart. It doesn't matter what we look like on the outside. It matters who we are on the inside. Now it's time to do some crafts. For today's craft, you're gonna need some paper, pens, and a pair of scissors. We're gonna draw an outline of a person, and that person is gonna be you. But make sure you leave enough room on the outside and on the inside, because we're gonna write in both. All around the outside, I want you to write down things that other people might see about you. So I might write down blonde, small, bossy, things like that. On the inside of our person, we're gonna write down all the things that are important on the inside of us. So take a minute and have a think. What characteristics do you think are the most important? And what characteristics do you think God thinks are the most important? So for example, I might write, being kind, being caring, being creative and knowing God. So now we have a picture of us. But what we're gonna do now is cut out the person and we're gonna get rid of everything that goes around the outside. So we're just left with how God sees us. And this is a great reminder for us that although people look at the outside, God looks at the heart. Now, often when we pray, we close our eyes. But did you know, it actually doesn't say we have to do that in the Bible. It's just a really helpful thing because it can help us to focus on God and make sure we're not distracted by the things we see. So today I'm going to pray. And if you want to join in with me, you can cover up your eyes and join in by saying Amen at the end. Dear God, I'm sorry for the times that I have let things on the outside distract me from what is most important. Thank you that you look at our hearts and that we can grow closer to you through Jesus. Please be with us today and help us reflect more of you in all we do. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Hopefully you joined in with me then, closing your eyes for our prayer and you weren't distracted. But quickly, rewind the video a little bit and look at all the things that could have ruined our prayer. This is why closing your eyes to pray can be really helpful. And so a final thought. It doesn't really matter if we have blonde hair or brown hair or no hair. 
Who we are on the inside is what really matters. David was later described as a man after God's own heart. He tried to reflect God in who he was on the inside, and we can too. Welcome to church today. Welcome to online church. My name's Andy and I lead the church here of St George and St Paul's here in Tiverton in Devon. You are most welcome. We're glad that you could join us. We hope that you've been staying safe and well and following all the guidance that's been given to us by the government and ensuring that those around us are safe and well too. A little later this morning, Claire, who is one of our trainee ministers, will be speaking about a journey that uh, is part of a story in the Bible that follows on just a few weeks after Jesus's resurrection. So we look forward to that. We'll also be singing and praying together, listening to the Bible being read. And we generally hope that you will enjoy being part of this and you will be encouraged today. We also want to thank you for all of you who have been sending us emails and phone calls, encouraging us for what you have uh, seen and heard and been blessed by with these weekly online services. We also want to thank you for the stories that we've heard about where you have been engaging and helping men, women, boys and girls in our local community. For those of you who have been shopping, 
picking up prescriptions, walking dogs, um, lots of different things like that. We know that some of you have been sending flowers, dropping off homemade food, and that's just amazing. But don't forget, even if you can't do that, one of the most important things you can do is just to phone somebody, drop them a message, let them know that you are thinking of them. We're also grateful to those of you who are picking up the food from the chat boxes, the food bank and giving it back to them. And also those of you who are part of the delivery service in ensuring that people get the things that they need. We're also very aware that many of you are key workers and we want to thank you. We know that many of you are teachers or church uh, school staff. We know that many of you work in shops and um, are delivery drivers too. We also know that many of our community are in the healthcare profession, either the NHS or as part of working in caring, uh, caring for people in care homes. And we want to thank you for all that you are doing at this time, for all of you who are keeping the country going and providing us with many things that we need. So thank you and we want to bless you and we'll be praying for you a little bit later in our service. So as we start today, would you like to join me with the prayer that will come up on the bottom of the screen? Shall we pray? Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing with praise, with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to worship and sing together now as Jen and her family lead us this morning. Thanks, Jen. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord.
Thank you, Jen. That was great. You know, part of our Christian journey is recognising that God calls us to be more and more like him. Now, I don't mean in a sort of holier than thou type of way, but in a way that helps us to understand more and more about Jesus. To ask questions like, what would Jesus do? To try and do likewise. In the Bible, we are asked to love God and love our neighbours. But we recognise that sometimes we don't do either of those things particularly well. So we pray a prayer that does not condemn us, but reminds us of the freedom that God gives us to know him, that he forgives us and gives us an opportunity to try again to love him and to serve him, to love our neighbour and serve our neighbour. Now, if you would like prayer one on one, our practice often is when we meet physically is to pray for people after the service. Now, due to the difficulty in doing that online, we want to offer that during the service. Now, if you are watching this on our online platform, you can request prayer by pressing the live prayer function. And that will take you to a dedicated chat area where someone will be willing to pray for you in private. And you can still hear and watch what else is going on, but it's there if you would like it. We recognise that especially in these tough times when we can all get a little bit cranky with people and a little bit of annoying too. And we know that people are cranky with us and they annoy us. We recognise that we need to seek God's forgiveness. So we're going to do that now. Let me pray. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. So we receive new life in him, as we confess our sins in penitence and in faith. So today we still ourselves, close our eyes, concentrate on our breathing, and listen to these words. We breathe in love. We breathe out hate, and we breathe in acceptance. We breathe out separation, and breathe in forgiveness. We breathe out fear, and breathe in peace. We breathe out anxiety and breathe in life. We breathe out death and breathe in gentleness. We breathe out tension and breathe in God's presence. We breathe in God's acceptance and his forgiveness. Amen. Amen indeed. Over the last few weeks um, when we've been streaming, sometimes at this point we have a fun quiz to uh, engage us, to test us, to have a little bit of fun, or we've watched a video. But today it's back to those quiz questions again. Just a few questions to remind us and to prepare us to be listening and to be ready to respond. So our first question, it's all about distance and journey today. So our first question is, what's the distance in metres for a professional football pitch from one goal to the other goal at the other end. What's the distance in metres for a professional football pitch from one goal to the other goal at the other end? Now, if you are not watching in the UK, I mean a soccer field, but for the rest of us, it's a football pitch. So is the distance 100 metres, 105 metres or 110 metres? Make your guess now. The answer is 105 metres. Yeah, that's about 115 yards in old money. Now, it does vary a little bit depending on the ground, but generally speaking, the professional pitch is 105 metres long. Our next question. How far in miles is the traditional distance recognised between Land's End and John O'Groats? So those two places at the opposite ends of the British Isles, how far in miles is the traditional, traditional distance between Land's End and John O'Groats? Is it 874 miles, 884 miles, or 894 miles? The answer is 874 miles. I know it's a long, long way. I don't know if any of you have done that, but uh, it's a long way. Our next question. Ordnance Survey is the officially recognised map recorder for the British Isles. 
when did they produce their first map available to the public with the name Ordnance Survey on it? So was it 1790, 1800 or 1810? So Ordnance Survey are the officially recognised map recorders for the British Isles. When did they produce their first map to the general public with their name Ordnance Survey on it? The answer is 1810. 1810, yeah, that was a map of the Isle of Wight and uh, the Dorset coast. So if you ever find one of them, they're worth a lot of money. So our final question then today, how many miles is it to Emmaus from Jerusalem? How many miles is it from Emmaus to Jerusalem or to Emmaus from Jerusalem? Either way, it's the same distance. So is it 9.4 miles, 10.4 miles or 11.4 miles? We'll obviously hear something more about this journey in a moment when Claire speaks, but until then, how far do we think it was? The answer is 10.4 miles. How did you do? Did you get them all right or not all right? See, how did you go? Anyway, before Claire speaks and shares with us what God has on her heart for us to hear this morning, we're going to hear that being read from the Bible today. Thank you, Sarah. Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to, to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those, who, and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. So we're outside on the farm and it's a gorgeous day and we're surrounded, it feels, by new life everywhere. We're lambing. We had a single this morning, so it's all happening. The beech trees with their lime coloured leaves have burst out this week as well, which has been so lovely. And life continues. People are working really hard. Uh, people are loving and caring for each other. Homeschooling has started. <laughs> and the seasons keep on going. My journey with you this morning starts at the foot of the cross. The symbol, the most powerful symbol of the empty cross that there is in the Christian faith. Because of what Jesus has done for us today, 
this journey has everything to do with new life. And we've all had a new life, haven't we, these past five weeks during lockdown. And I wonder what you've been up to. Have you been having a good old tidy? Have you tried some new skills? Have you been perhaps more attached to Facebook than normally posting some of those new things that you've tried with your families perhaps? And then watching and waiting for all the likes, which can become quite addictive, can't it? As in other things that we throw ourselves into can become quite addictive. But I wonder how you've actually been through this time. Sam and I have been um, in social isolation for a quite a long time because he was ill right at the very beginning. And we've had a great deal more time to think about things and wonder what's been going on in the world. And I've actually had an essay to write in the middle of it as well. And I've had to look at some um, statistics and a worrying statistic. I don't know if you knew this already, but in the age group of 20 to 49, the biggest form of death is by suicide. And this made me really sad. Um, and 75% of those were men. And this made me feel sad. And I actually cried quite a lot about that and generally about our old world and how that looks and why would that be happening with all the progression that we've had in our society. There must be a lot of unhappiness. And I was praying maybe this new experience of lockdown would um, give us some more value about what actually is important. And apparently Google, uh, of late, have had the most hits on prayer sites, which again is really encouraging and hopefully people will find a new way of life. Let's walk on our journey. I've got my husband filming us today and um, he's been very helpful. Thank you, darling. So, where have we got to in church? Um, we're on this journey in church. Jesus has died and has risen, and the women of the church have been to the tomb and found that he wasn't there. Jesus also appeared to Mary by herself, and she didn't recognize him as she was uh, walking along in the garden. And um, now we have two disciples that are walking on their journey to, um, to Emmaus. And as they were walking, Jesus catches up with them. But they don't know it's Jesus. They don't recognise him either. So they start chatting normally. Jesus makes out he doesn't know what's been going on. So they, um, they fill him in and they still don't recognise who he is until they get back to the house that they're staying at. And Jesus then breaks the bread. And it's that moment that they recognise that it's Jesus and their Lord. So they had a bit of a recap on how it felt um, when they were with Jesus. And they said to themselves, did our hearts not burn within us? Their hearts actually burnt within them when they knew that they were with their Lord. Now we as humans have a deep longing for reintegration and completeness. God made us, and as Augustine says, our hearts are ever unquiet until it finds rest in him. We need that lasting peace and the joy of our maker to do life, don't we? We just can't do life without him. We also had another reading this morning from the Old Testament, which says, if my people who are called by name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Now in this verse, being humble is the key. And being humble, we can do this by being grateful, having grateful hearts, and being thankful for people in our lives, and all God has done for us. And also, it's really important to say sorry well, turning back from the old, turning back from those things that trap us and, you know, those things that are potentially self-gratifying behaviours, returning instead to happiness and holiness, coming home as it was, really, as it were, coming home, for that feeling of homecoming. And prayer too is key in this Old Testament verse, talking to our maker and transformer of our lives and asking him to heal our land and awaking us to a new normal. But what holds us back 
from going for this? What holds us back? There's a huge misconception that Christian, the Christian way is dull. But when we see holiness in people, like proper holiness, we know who they are, we could probably name them, the people that ooze holiness. They are fun. They are, as C.S. Lewis puts it, irresistible. And they have life at all its fullest. And whatever their circumstances that they find themselves in, they still have life in all its fullness. So how does that feel? encountering God. I mean, the disciples had the rare and wonderful opportunity of having Jesus walking with them and feeling that their hearts burnt. But we have prayer, we have Jesus with us in a different way. We have the humble joy of worship and praise and thanks. We can have that inexplicable peace that everything will be okay when we are in that humble joy of worship. Now, I'm sorry, I can only really speak from my own experience of how that works for me. But in the mornings, I get up and I light a candle and I start doing like the Franciscans and other meditative Christians. And I start praying, my God, my all, my God, my King, my God, my everything. And then the Holy Spirit just wells up within me and I can feel that warming and burning of the Holy Spirit in my heart. And then I read Lectio 365, uh, which is a Bible app, everyone can get it. And it's full of the word of God, full of rich truths that I can have imprinted on my brain. And, and it helps me then in my day. So this happens to you when you worship within the Holy Spirit, in spirit and truth, really encountering God. Now Jesus did the hard work for us on the cross. We're so thankful for that. We don't have to do anything like that, thank the Lord. And was the juice worth the squeeze, I wonder? Yes, is the resounding answer. The juice was worth the squeeze. He ended that fear of sin and death. He took away that enslavement and entrapping that the things of life can ensnare us. He has ended the fear of death as well, because no longer does death have a hold on us, Death is in fact now very much a part of life. So we don't have to worry about any of those things anymore. He is, that's Jesus, our way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Our hearts are truly warmed by his presence on a daily basis. Let's respond in worship and truth now. So our family have been helping and practicing a bit to help us in our worship.
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. We made a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Thank you, Claire, for that message. Really encouraging. Thank you. Each of us, of course, is on our own journey. That doesn't mean that we should dally or take our time. I mean, we all have our own paths, don't we? But Jesus does remind us in the Bible that he is the only way to God. And how he meets us, of course, will be different. But his truth and who he is, is exactly the same. His love that he showers on us now is the same love that he displayed upon the cross and at his resurrection all those years ago. And it's that same love that's available to us now. We're going to spend some time talking to him now in prayer. And Jude, who is one of our licensed readers, is going to lead us in prayer this morning. Thanks, Jude. In our prayers this morning, let us come together with Jesus to explore the place where we are just now. Life may not be easy where you are. It may feel very strange or even challenging with illness, financial hardship, loneliness or family tensions or bereavement. Jesus, we thank you that we, wherever we are in this lockdown, we are not alone and our homes can be a space where you are where love lives and where you walk with us. So would you like to join me at the end of every section and say, through everything you are faithful. Jesus, thank you for this space that we live in. Help us to use these weeks to worship you and use the gifts you have given us in praise. Help us to be creative for others, whether that be with craft, art, prayers or perhaps poetry, music, messages to others, videos or even building or gardening. Help us to share your love with others in as many ways as possible. Through everything you are faithful. Psalm 137 asks, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And today we might feel real sadness at the loss of everything that is normal. School, work, planned holidays or weddings, hugs, loved ones near or far who we cannot see, or those who are sick or have even died recently. Thank you, Jesus, that you walk beside us and protect us each day. There are so many people struggling in this new situation, not knowing how long it might go on for or how it will be resolved. Our leaders too have hard decisions to make, which affects both lives and livelihoods. We pray that you will strengthen and help everyone in the days to come as they face change. Through everything... You are faithful. We are in isolation but still connected. Jesus, help us to stay separated in lockdown, to preserve the lives of others and to help those frontline workers working to save lives each day. May we keep our connections in whatever ways are possible with people around us to support them and show them your love in a very practical way. We ask for guidance, wisdom and energy too for all those who volunteer help to others during the week. Through everything, you are faithful. Jesus, help us to remember and do what we can for those worldwide without even basic food, clean water or medical services. 
May we look out of our own lives today and see and pray for their need, for the aid organisations and charities worldwide and to give help where we can. Remembering that this virus affects every population, including those most, mo- most vulnerable in even normal times. Jesus, we thank you that in the places most in need, you walk alongside and will always be the bread of life to everyone. Through everything, you are faithful. As we come to the end of our prayers, let us join together and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Jude, for those prayers. So we draw towards the end of our service. And as part of our worship during this final song, I'd like you to make this time a virtual offering time or to offer that to you if you would like. If you're watching on our online platform, you can click the Donate Give button and that will take you to a place where you can make a donation. If you're not watching on that platform, you can go to our website www.tivertonchurch.org and you'll find a donate page there if you would like to do that. Now, I am also so thankful for the many of you who are watching who give directly every month to the work of the church here. Thank you for your support and what it enables us as a church to do, to support men, women, boys and girls in this country and in other places around the world. So thank you to you. Jen is now going to lead us in our final hymn of praise this morning. I'd love to hear you singing. Should we worship together? Let's do that right now. Thanks, Jen.
What a great hymn of praise that was. Thank you to Jen and to everybody involved in today's service. We really appreciate all of the effort and energy and time that you put in. And in a short moment at 11.30, we'll be opening up our Zoom coffee morning. Uh, we may be open a few minutes before that, but don't forget if you join us and there are people already in that, don't worry. It's just like being in a large gathering where some people arrive early and some people arrive slightly late. We'll be breaking up into some small groups to be able to engage in slightly easier conversation, but we do hope you can join us. If you choose not to do that, that's okay too. We hope that you've enjoyed our time together this morning and we look forward to you joining with us next week. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook or you can check out all of the content that we put up on our YouTube channel too. Until then, why don't I pray for us? God our Father, may the whole world join in a hymn of thanksgiving for the great love that you have shown to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. For he has risen from the dead and so may our hearts and lives echo your praise now and always. And so may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us, those whom we love, today and always. Amen. Have a great week. Uh, stay safe, stay well and we look forward to you joining us next week. Until then, goodbye.